What's going on guys? This is Lior with Compass out of Boston. And in this video, we're going to be talking about whether it's worth for you guys to look at a condo instead of a multifamily as your first purchase. So let's get at it. What's going on guys? My name is Lior and I'm with Compass out of Boston. And in this video, we're going to be talking about whether you should consider buying a condo instead of a multifamily as your first purchase. Now, before we get into it, two quick things. Number one, if you guys haven't already subscribed to my channel, smash that subscribe button because I put out so many videos every single week talking about what it's like to live around the greater Boston area, uh, tips on buying, tips on selling and investing. So if you haven't already, smash that button. And number two, if you guys are even thinking about doing anything with real estate around the greater Boston area, uh, hit me up on, shoot me a text, send me a call, send me an email, hit me up on Instagram. I get so many calls from you guys watching my videos and I absolutely love it. So hit me up and I will help you out. So let's get into today's content, right? So I, the reason I decided to do this video is because I've had a lot of people recently call me and tell me, hey, Leo, I really wanted to buy a multifamily for my first purchase. I wanted to buy a two family, but prices here are just so crazy within greater Boston area. So does it make sense for me to just buy a condo? And here's the deal. Number one, yes, prices have been going up and they're really expensive. Multifamilies are really expensive now. If you're gonna be anywhere within 20 to 25 minutes of Boston, you're probably looking at a purchase price for a two family of at least six to six hundred fifty thousand dollars. That being said, six to six fifty probably gets you a pretty small uh, piece of property that's gonna need some work. If you're looking for stuff that's more turnkey, be prepared to start at six fifty to seven hundred more realistically. So yes, prices here have been going up and up and up, and they're definitely getting more expensive to break into. So I don't think it's a bad idea to buy your first property as a, as a condo, right? Because a condo is going to be, first of all, cheaper, right? So you won't have to spend $700,000 on a condo. You can get one that's much cheaper. And you can also do the same sort of, uh, you can do a similar house hack, right? And I've talked about this in other videos where you can kind of hack your way in a condo, right? So you can buy a two bedroom condo, a three bedroom condo, and potentially get a roommate or potentially get two roommates that can help you pay the mortgage. Now, the other advantage that I see with buying a condo too is it's a lot less stressful way of breaking into real estate investing. So if you're thinking down the line, you want to own a lot of property, that's awesome. But remember, real estate is a slow learning curve and you don't want to necessarily overwhelm yourself. So a lot of people for, may not feel super comfortable buying a two or three family because it does require a lot of maintenance, right? You're responsible for multiple units. You're responsible, the whole foundation is your responsibility. All the mechanicals are your responsibility. The roof is your responsibility. So, you know, it's a, it is a lot of work and it is a lot of liability in your head. So for some people, a condo is the perfect way to break in because you can just take a small piece of a building. And again, you can kind of start to get the sense of what does it feel like to own a home? What are some of the, uh, what are some common things that break or that need maintenance and how much does all that cost? And again, if you want to rent out a bedroom or two, you can definitely go ahead and do so. Now, as I've talked in other videos, if you're going to approach condo as your first purchase and you're thinking, maybe I'll live in it for a year, maybe two years, and then I'll move out and keep it as a rental. That's awesome. But you want to approach that purchase from a little bit of a strategic investment perspective. And what I mean by that is, well, instead of just buying any good old condo that looks really beautiful, maybe you kind of approach it a little bit more strategically where you look at strategic condo fees, right? From your, you know, from a rental perspective, you don't want necessarily want to buy into a condo association that has monster condo fees. You know, there's plenty of buildings around the greater Boston area where condo fees can be easily 400, 500, 600 and way higher. So buying a condo into that kind of building may not necessarily be your best bet if you want to keep that um, bill, if you want to keep that property as a rental in the future. Again, the other thing you want to look for is, are there things that can kind of create additional value, right? Whether it's in your equity or in the, or in the potential rent. So is there an extra dining room that could potentially be converted to a bedroom? You can still certainly do that in a condo. It doesn't have to be a multifamily. So let's say you have a two bedroom with a living room and a dining room. 
it is the is the layout good enough where you can essentially convert that dining room into a bedroom and then when you move out you can rent it as a three bed one bath instead of a two bed one bath that's obviously things you want to be on the lookout for other things you want to be on the lookout for is um, depending on your strategy are there things where i can renovate and improve and kind of generate additional equity right so let's say you buy something with a dated kitchen or a dated bathroom doesn't make sense for you to potentially take on such projects learn how to learn how to do these renovate them and then you not only not only can you increase the potential cash flow of the rental once you move out but you also increase the value of the unit which again is all of, that's kind of the core principles of real estate investing right is how do you create additional value in the real estate that you buy and one other point i'll throw out too is again if you can even if you get into a condo um you can still leverage that down the line right so even though it may not necessarily be a multifamily where you're maybe getting two different uh tenants paying you know paying you rent on a month-to-month -month basis condo is still a condo and it's still a piece of real estate and if the market continues to in increase or stay steady and if you do some sort of renovations that improve the value of your property you can still leverage that condo down the line where you can potentially take a home equity line of credit which is what i'm doing right now on one of my properties and then use that to continue to maybe buy another condo or maybe then you go to a two-family so my point with all this is look you don't necessarily you know buying a two or three family is fantastic but there's certainly it's pricey and there's certainly a lot of work that comes in with it right it's a lot of work it's a lot of liability there's a lot of things you need to handle so if you're not necessarily ready for that either financially mentally um, from a work perspective whatever i think a condo is an absolutely amazing way to get started you'll you'll kind of learn the ropes of what it takes to uh own property what it takes to renovate what it takes to maintain and then you can continue slowly improve and eventually uh continue to build out the real estate portfolio that you've always wanted so hopefully that makes sense guys i know that's kind of a lot of different points but if you guys have any questions any comments any thoughts shoot them below and like i said guys i get so many calls from you guys who watch my videos on youtube so if you have any questions anything hit me up shoot me a text send me an email hit me up on instagram whatever it is and i will help you out